Let's finish up with chapter 30, 33, and today we're going to talk about Lenz's Law and Faraday's Law. These are the two laws that we need. Uh, Faraday's Law, we can calculate the EMF, the voltage that's induced in a conducting loop, and Lenz's Law, we can use to figure out uh, what the direction of the current flow might be. And Lenz's Law, we've been talking a little bit about it. Basically, the gist is, is that nature likes to keep the same magnetic flux going through a loop. All right, so if the magnetic flux changes, nature will create a magnetic field that opposes that change in flux. And we've talked about that a little bit in class. So here's an example. Uh, we have a bar magnet. So the bar magnet is being moved downwards. And so the bar magnet makes this magnetic field. Uh, as it goes lower, okay, this magnetic field grows. So the flux downward increases. So nature induces a magnetic field going upwards to try to cancel out that change in flux. So this can be kind of tricky, and so in class we worked on this procedure. So here's our strategy. Okay, so the first thing is we draw our pic picture. So I like to draw the, the initial case and the final case. And we figure out, okay, what direction is the magnetic flux that penetrates the coil? Sometimes you'll have to use right hand rules to figure this out. All right, and then the second part is by reasoning through the problem, you figure out, okay, so the, between the initial and the final, is this flux increasing or decreasing? All right, and so that's your, your basically look at the initial and final cases, and then essentially what you want to do in the final uh, step here is you want to make your final case look like the initial case. So what kind of magnetic field do you need to add for that to happen? So here's the example we talked about uh, in class, and so I draw my initial and my final loops, and so we're going to do the view where I'm staring downwards here. So here's the view. Uh, that we're doing. So I'm staring sort of downwards. And so what I see is, let's say, for instance, I see three magnetic field lines pointing into the page. And so here, the bar is moving upwards. As I move the bar upwards, that means there'll be less magnetic field lines pointing through. Okay, so uh, the nature, the magnetic field that nature creates, okay, we want that to be going basically inside, pushing down. So this is the induced uh, B field. That's the induce, and so my thumb goes into the page, my fingers are going to coil around uh, this direction here, uh, so from looking down, this would be a clockwise fashion, and you can see that that's the exact same fashion that we get over here. So let's try an example. Here's a give it a try. So here we have a current in a long wire, okay, so we know a little bit about how the magnetic field in the current in a long wire works, and so this loop here, okay, uh, the current in the straight wire is decreasing, so which is true? So think about this and we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, so let's look at this. So let's draw our little pictures. So here's my loop. Okay, I probably should have drawn this square, but you get the idea, so it's inwards. So now here's my magnetic field. So if I take my right hand or my current, if I put my thumb in the direction of the current, okay, my right hand points inwards uh, on the right hand side. So it's pointing inwards here and it points outwards over here. So the magnetic field has a tendency to flow that way there. So first of all, you got to make sure that that makes sense to you. And so that means that the magnetic field is pushing, is, is going inwards uh, through our loop. So initially, let's say the magnetic field has like three lines going into our loop. And so what they say is they say the current is decreasing. If it's decreasing, that means afterwards you might only have two pushing into your loop. Okay, so the induced magnetic field that you want to have is going to be into the page. And so your thumbs into the page, and this would come out to be uh, a clockwise current. Okay, so you want to add magnetic field going into the page, and so it's a clockwise indu induced, uh, induced current in the loop. Now, uh, Knight goes through, he goes through every possible example you can have. Now, I don't know if it's worth memorizing this, but it's still nice to have. So here's Lenz's Law. So here we do the case where the B field is up, okay, and steady. So there's no change, so there's no induced field, no induced current. All right, here's the case where the B field is up and it's increasing. Okay, so it's up and it's increasing, and so if I was to draw my little loops, here's my initial, here's my final, so up would mean maybe there's three points pointing upward. If it's increasing, then after a few seconds, there might be four points pushing upward. So that means my thumb wants to go in uh, to cancel that last one out. If my thumb goes in, okay, that's going to induce a clockwise current, uh, and that's what indeed happens here. Okay, so that's one case. Uh, the other case is when it's upwards. So again, we're sort of taking the viewpoint where we're staring 
down from here. That's the common viewpoint I'd like to do. So here's, again, my initial and my final. And now in this case, it's, so you've got the three B fields put pointing up, but now it's decreasing. So now there's only, say, two in the final case. I want my thumb then to be coming out of the page, okay, to induce the B field going upwards. Uh, and if I do that, I'm going to make a B field going this way here. So my B induced is outwards. Okay, and that would lead to counterclockwise current. That's what we get. All right, another boring case. It's down and steady. Whenever it's steady, there is no change. Nothing's happening. So here's a case where it's down. Um, uh, so it's down and it's uh, increasing. So we make our pictures like we normally do. Again, we'll take the same view from the top part. And so it's downward, so it means you'd see the tail of the feathers. And so now if it's increasing, that means the final case, there might be four... Uh, of those guys. And so that means I want my induced B field to be out of the page. So my thumb comes out of the page to cancel that last one. And so the current that would be happening here if it's out of the page would be a counterclockwise current. And finally, we got the case where it's uh, induced, it's B down and decreasing. And so here's my initial, here's my final. Uh, and so there'd be maybe like three pushing into the page. And if it's decreasing, there's only two. And so that means the B induced that I want to make is going to go into the page. If it's into the page, I'm going to go around clockwise. So that's how that works. So try some examples from the book uh, and get some more practice. Now, the Faraday's law is what we use to actually get numbers. And it looks just like this here. So an EMF is induced uh, in a conducting loop. If the magnetic flux, the loop changes. And so the, equa the equation basically says the EMF that we induce equals the change in the magnetic flux with respect to time. Now, we generally just think about this as the absolute value, so we don't worry about uh, the, the, whether it comes out the answer is negative or positive. And again, remember, our definition of magnetic flux is something like this, B times the area times cosine of the angle between it, okay, uh, d dt. So it's the derivative of this. And again, the way we do this is we use Faraday's law to get the number. We use Lenz's law to figure any direction we might want to be doing. Um, here's just another way to write it. So, so sometimes you'll have a problem where it's just easier uh, to attack it uh, with uh, deltas instead of derivatives. And so we can think about it as being the difference in the magnetic fluxes uh, divided by the time. And so that would be kind of something like this here. So BA cosine of theta, you'd have the final case minus uh, BA cosine of theta, the initial case, uh, over the change in time. And so this isn't as exact as a derivative, uh, but it can still get you a pretty good number. Now our flux is BA cosine of the angle, uh, and so I, I tend to write this as phi, but, but let's just be careful to be consistent with, um, with night. We'll use that as a, as a theta. Now, three things can change. The area of the loop can change. Okay, sometimes you'll have problems where the area of the loop gets bigger or smaller. That's like the, when we were doing class. Uh, the magnetic field can change. It can increase or decrease. And also the angle between A and B, which again, we're calling that to be theta. So three things can be changing. So you've got to be careful which one of those things is changing in your problem. And again, we use Lenz's law to find the direction. We use this Faraday's just to find the number. But we use the Lenz's law to find the direction. And so here's a nice example. This is what we were doing in class, okay? This is a case where the area is actually increasing. When we slide this bar across, the area inside is getting bigger, okay? And so we make a little calculation here. The magnetic flux, okay, for us is so B area times cosine of theta. Well, so now again, the theta, uh, the area vector, it would sort of, it would either point in or out of the page. So either way, cosine theta is giving us a positive or negative one. And since we don't really care about the overall sign, we just make it positive one. So the cosine is just equal to positive one. And then so it's our B field. So the B field we call B. And the area, according to this picture, I can call length times width. Uh, okay, and the width in this picture, they've called it X. So B, L, X. So X is increasing. Okay, it's steadily increasing. And so here, to find Faraday's law, we take the first derivative with respect to time of this calculation of the, the flux, X, L, B. Okay, now L and B aren't changing. And so when I take the derivative, the only thing that I take the derivative of is DX, DT. And of course, we know DX, DT is V, B, L. 
this is kind of cool because here we got the same answer we got in class, uh, but we got that in class using different uh, types of, uh, we, we used chapter 32 stuff instead of chapter 32, uh, 33 stuff. And then to find the current, you just take that voltage and divide by the resistance. So here's a, a nice uh, example to give it a try. So we have a, uh, a loop of two centimeters on each side, a square loop. And down below, we have how the B field is changing. So try to calculate the induced EMF around this loop. See what you think, and we'll talk about it in a second. All right, so hopefully you got this answer here. Uh, basically, uh, the EMF is the change in the flux with respect to time, and so that for us equals area. Uh, and so here, since the area is not changing, okay, the only thing you got to take the derivative of is the B field. And so here, the area is just what? Well, it's going to be 0 0.02 meters squared. It's just the area of that loop. And then dBdt we can calculate from over here. It's a nice steadily increasing uh, graph. And so to calculate dBdt, I essentially just do uh, you know like a b final uh, minus b initial over the change in time. And so for instance, when I go out to uh, my b final is 0 0.25. Uh, minus zero, so say the initial is starting down here, so my ending points are my init initial and my final point are like that, okay? And then the total time is 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, and so I can type, put that in over here, be 0 0.050 uh, Tesla divided by 0 0.01 seconds. And when we do that, we get this answer right here. All right, another example. In this one, we're going to use that second equation. We're not using derivatives, but deltas. So here we have a flat coil. This is a pretty tricky one, too. I'll give you a heads up beforehand. And so the flat coil starts at this, like it is in the picture here. So it starts where there's an angle of 30 degrees, okay, uh, between the magnetic field and the area vector. So here's like my area vector. And so it starts with an angle of 30 degrees. And then basically, if 0 0.05 seconds later, this thing is flat and there is no angle. And so it kind of would just be flat. And so the B field and the area vector would just be in the same direction. We give you all the info. So see if you can calculate uh, the induced EMF for this one. OK. And for me, I got this number right here. Uh, let's look at this nice and slow. Uh, so my initial. Uh, flux looks like this. So if I draw a kind of a, a view where I'm staring down the z-axis here, okay, so initially it would look like this. So here's my area vector, all right, and the B field is going like this here. That's the B field, and here's the angle in between, which is 30. And so it would just be the B field, which is this 0 0.012. The area, which, what would the area of this? It's a rectangle. You know, the area would be something kind of like this. It would just be um, 0.2 meters times 0.3 meters. That would be the area. Uh, and then the cosine 30. Now the final flux looks like this here. And so if I'm looking from that side down the x-axis again, it's like you were saying, the B field and the area vector are now in the same direction. And so what I literally do here is I can do this at delta. I can take the final uh, uh, f uh, flux, which is BA cosine 0 minus the initial, which is cosine 30. Since the B and the A don't change, I just pull them out of the parentheses. So it's B times A times cosine theta minus cosine 30. I divide by the total time, uh, and I get 1.93 uh, or 92 times 10 to the negative 3 volts. And finally, let's just look at this one and try to figure out what direction the current would be flowing. And so here we're sort of, uh, our viewpoint would be looking down the y-axis. So looking at this picture here. So what direction would this current flow? Think about this one and we'll talk about it. Okay, uh, so for this one, I got clockwise. So let's look at our picture. So here's my initial rectangle and here's my final rectangle. And so again, for this one, we've got to use uh, the lenses law. And so if I'm staring down that viewpoint, the B field is pointing out at me. So let's say my typical is there's three B fields pointing out at us. All right. Well, when this thing gets flat, the B field, more B field, will be piercing through it. So there'll be more uh, B fields pointing out at you. And so here, the external or the, the induced B field that we want then would be into the page to cancel out one of these. If it's into the page, uh, then the current is going to go in sort of a clockwise direction. So it's going to flow around this way here. Uh, again, it's always opposing the flux.